Tiger Roars when it matters the most. Hi and welcome to the Daily Sports Update presented to you by Toyota. I'm Amber Wilson for CBSSports.com. Normally it takes 72 holes to decide a winner for the U.S. Open, but Tiger Woods and Rocco Mediate couldn't do it with 18 more on Monday. Mediate closed a three-shot lead by Tiger, then Tiger birdied on the 18th to make Mediate have to make a par to force sudden death. The players moved to the seventh hole, where Tiger managed to par, but Mediate found the bunker, then hit the ball out of play. After being able to drop, he pushed the ball onto the green, but missed a par shot that would have extended the round to another hole, given Woods major number 14. He's now just four away from Jack Nicklaus for most all time. I think this is the best. Um, just because all the things I had to deal with. I mean, this is probably, it's, it's a close one to, to the first one I won. Um, but with all the things considered this week, um, yeah. From clubs to bats, major news coming from both teams in the Big Apple. It's been all downhill going back to late last season when the Mets held a seven-game lead in mid-September in the NL East and failed to win the division. Skipper Willie Randolph somehow held on to his job, but the Mets brass had enough of the mediocre play this season as the preseason favorites to win the pennant are under 500 after 69 games. Randolph pitching coach Rick Peterson and first base coach Tom Nieto were all fired while most Mets fans were sleeping. Rick came down at 3.15 a.m. Eastern time, two hours after a victory over the L.A. Angels. No comments yet from GM Omar Manaya. He will be available late this afternoon. Bench coach Jerry Manuel will take over the managing duties. As for the Crosstown Yankees, interleague play was kind to their bats as they took on Houston over the weekend, sweeping the Astros and outscoring them 23-5 in three games. But it wasn't as kind to the arms. The lone consistent bright spot in the starting rotation, ace Chiming Wong, had to be helped off the field after scoring in the 11 0 win for the Bombers. While rounding third, he partially tore a tendon and sprained his right foot and had to be helped off the field. He'll have to wear a walking boot and use crutches for the next six weeks. And of course, this upsets Hank Steinbrenner, leading the Yanks co chair to tell the National League to grow up and join the 21st century by using a designated hitter. Over in the Pacific Northwest, the Mariners are making a change. After going into this season with high expectations, Seattle has the worst record in baseball. CO Howard Lincoln fired general manager Bill Pavassi after five seasons on the job. He often deflected the criticism off of his manager John McLaren and onto his players and himself. Now his duties will fall to Vice President Lee Pelicutas for the rest of the year. We are now down to seven teams in Omaha as Miami eliminated rival Florida State in the loser's bracket. Georgia pulled ahead late to defeat Stanford 4-3. The Cardinal are still alive in the double elimination bracket and will take on the Hurricanes on Wednesday for the right to face the Bulldogs. Over in the other remaining foursome, Rice faces LSU in an elimination game while Fresno State and UNC play in the winner's bracket. In Oakland, wide receiver Javon Walker seemed to be off to a good start after a not-so-pleasant ending to his tenure in Denver. But what happens in Vegas definitely didn't stay there. Walker was found unconscious on a street off the Vegas Strip early Monday morning, reportedly a victim of a robbery. He was taken to the hospital with significant injuries where he is in fair condition. And the Las Vegas Review Journal is reporting that he suffered an orbital fracture, meaning one or more bones around his eye could be broken. On to the association, and for players that declared for the NBA draft but don't have agents, Monday was decision day for leaving their names in. Thanks to our college basketball senior writer Gary Parrish, here's a list of key names that will be off to the NBA. Two familiar faces from the Final Four are going Kansas's Mario Chalmers and UCLA's Luke Richard Mbamute. Michael Beasley's former teammate at Kansas State, Bill Walker, is joining him at the pro level. He kept his name in despite suffering a knee injury. And after being projected as a possible lottery pick, West Virginia's Joe Alexander signed with an agent yesterday. As for those pulling their names, it looks like North Carolina will be the early favorite to win it all in 2009 as Wayne Ellington, Danny Green, and Ty Lawson are coming back for another year. Robert Dozier is returning to the Memphis Tigers, and perhaps the biggest surprise, projected first-round pick Chase Budinger will give Lute Olsen one more year at Arizona. That'll do it for the Daily Sports Update. Remember, Game 6 of the NBA Finals tips off in Boston tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. And that'll do it for me for now. Keep your mouth right here at CBSSports.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. And if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. I'm Amber Wilson. Have a great one, guys.